The red half of Manchester is hurting. The once dominant force, the club that defined English football for two decades, is now a shadow of its former glory. Trophies have dried up, performances have faltered, and the club's identity has been lost. A revival always seems to be on its way. A slew of managers have walked through the doors in the past decade, bringing on a promise of a new era, and each have ended up being thrown to the wolves, with no real major differences being seen. To understand the root causes of this decline, we must examine four key areas – recruitment, player culture, infrastructure and the wage structure. And I'm going to tell you exactly what needs to change at Manchester United. We all know, every football fan does, that the club has made numerous expensive signings that have failed to live up to expectations, leading to squad imbalances and a lack of cohesion. But how did it get to this point? This is something that has occurred under multiple managers. It's easy to blame them for creating these bloated squads with what seems like a lack of direction. But all of these managers have had someone above them who should have had the responsibility of doing this. Here's where the first change needs to happen. John Murtaugh is the director of football according to Manchester United. His duties include working with the board and the manager to identify transfer targets in line with the club's philosophy, handling player contracts and ensuring the club complies with financial fair play rules, overseeing the club's playing philosophy, the academy, the training ground and player contracts, managing relations with sports media and analyzing commercial performance. Then we have Darren Fletcher, the technical director, who works closely with John Murtaugh to add technical input and direction into all football areas and performance areas. His responsibilities, according to United, include focusing on a coordinated and long-term approach to player and squad development, helping maintain the integral link between the academy and the first team, aligned with Manchester United's values and culture, offering professional expertise in the areas of recruitment and squad building, both in the senior team and youth ranks, overseeing the club's playing philosophy the academy, the training ground, player contracts and the recruitment of both players and coaching staff. The reality is that all of that is a load of cod swallow. There shouldn't be two people doing those roles. It's reminiscent of when Gerard Houllier and Roy Evans attempted to co-manage Liverpool. It was never going to work. There's no hierarchy. Naturally people have different ways in which they want to work. The first line in each of those statements for their duties contradict each other. Darren Fletcher is in charge of deciding the long-term approach to squad and player development. Then why is Murtaugh in charge of transfers? Now on to why it seems he has no power. United's main rivals have done this. At Arsenal, Liverpool and Man City, there's no split roles. There's Ziki, Edu and Jörg Schmatke. John Murtaugh has a really weird job. Seems he has power, but also has no power. Here's why. When it comes to dealing with agents, there have been complaints that he's uncontactable and agents have had more success in dealing with Richard Arnold, who's now gone. When Michael Edwards was in charge at Liverpool, he said the biggest thing for him was the relationship with the agents. He noted that the agent isn't just the agent anymore, plays the role of anybody. Four or five people. He's the father figure, he's the agent, that's his job. He's a sounding board, he's the best friend in some instances. Where a player's moving around the world, he loses a little bit of contact with his family and friends. This is the nature of modern football. You have to deal with agents. Zicky, Edu, Edwards all seem to have it down to a T and know what they are doing. Yet Murtaugh is known for playing the long game and not giving in to players and agents' demands. Well, that certainly worked well considering the squad at United, considering the fees that have been paid and the wages that they're paying to players. Look at all the signings made in recent times by Manchester United. These don't look to be part of any strategy. These all seem to be made by the managers. What's the point of John then? Eric Ten Hag is signing 16 players for over 400 million and the majority of players he's managed before or they played in the Netherlands, then what's John doing? In fact, what's the recruitment side of the club actually involved in here? It seems the manager has all the power. At other clubs, the managers have been stopped from signing players by the DOFs because they're the ones in charge. They have the power. Their remit is to oversee long-term squad building in combination with the manager. In Manchester United, it's hard to see that. I could also go into the data side of things here, but I think with the problems I've just described, there's no point delving into that too much. We know most clubs use data-driven analytics now to enhance their scouting. At United, it's it seems the scout is the manager. Get rid of Murtaugh, get rid of Fletcher. Put one man in charge and put the manager under him. Give the decision making to someone who knows what they are doing. Paul Mitchell, for example, has been mentioned multiple times and that could be a good move for United. Moving on to player culture. I'll give Ten Hag some credit. He's tried to address the absolute crap that's been going on within the squad and some of the egos of these players. That Instagram generation of Pogba and Lingard have now gone and look at where they are now. 
but the indiscipline and the frequent leaks in the media about the dressing room not believing in the manager are just ridiculous. Players complaining they don't know why they are running? I reckon James Milner would slap a player if they asked that question to him. Nemanja Matic has been doing a tour of the Balkans podcast it seems. Even when he arrived at the club, he could not believe the difference in professionalism between Chelsea and Manchester United. He noted players turning up to trainings late consistently, considering the time passed between his arrival and now and that lack of professionalism still ongoing you have to say that this is now the club culture it needs to be rooted out and if that means getting rid of good players you do it Fergie used to do it Klopp and Guardiola have done it if you want to be at the level of those guys you need the right culture the wages being paid by Manchester United to their players it's just absolutely ridiculous again this comes back to recruitment and the incompetence of those in the hierarchy Manchester United's average wage per player is around 188k a week it's higher than City and Liverpool teams that pay players more than they are worth are always going to fail it's been a constant theme at United since Fergie left what is a player worth? As much as fans like to think a transfer fee is what a player is worth, it's not. Wages are. The teams that pay the most wages generally finish high in the league table. So where the hell have United been? There's not been a single title challenge, yet they've been paying the most wages. Rashford is on more or the same as Mohamed Salah. What has Rashford accomplished so far in his career to be given that much money in comparison to Mohamed Salah? Martial, Sancho, even Maguire, God bless him are all on ridiculous amounts of money while their track record in football is similar to that of Bebe. Once again, this isn't the doing of any single manager. They want the players, but the hierarchy are the ones who negotiate with agents and pay the money. Over at Liverpool, their contracts are performance-based, so when they have a shit season, their wage bill is lower. When they win trophies, they pay more. But hey, they won the trophies. United need to sort out this wage structure. I'm of the opinion that this probably has an impact on the player culture there too. Finally, something that's so simple yet so neglected that it should make every Manchester United fan angry. The infrastructure. The stadium is failing. It's falling apart. Rats are everywhere. The roof's leaking. Fans are having water pissing down on them. Fix it. It's not that hard. Why is every other team in the league making improvements to their ground or building a new one whilst Manchester United sit still? The improvements are really not that expensive to make. Yet all we hear about is building a new stadium, the cost, blah blah blah, that's not needed. Old Trafford is iconic, start fixing shit, start improving the hygiene. This impacts fans, the people who contribute money to the club, the reason United are able to pay those players the obscene wages. I was in the executive areas recently and even those toilets made me think what the hell. Then we have Carrington, the training ground that hasn't changed in 15 years according to one of the greatest players ever. Build a brand new training ground that matches City, Liverpool and Spurs. This isn't the 90s anymore. If you don't invest in your training facilities then the results will be reflected on the pitch. Maybe that's why some of these players don't want to show up to training when the showers are broken and towels are chipped in the swimming pool. Even small cosmetic changes can uplift the feeling you have when you're training there. All in all, I guess it's not too much to ask to have all of those things in order at a club of the stature of Manchester United. These are things I'd want changing straight away. The club hired me as a consultant or even as a manager, which won't happen of course. Hey Jim, if you're listening, hint hint. This is the footy coach and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.